Now this is a story, arguably one of the most iconic fighters in our lifetime. A fighter that was discovered in the mean streets of Miami that rose to fame from those bloody hard hitting backyard brawls. Yeah, I'm talking about that guy. Now as then a beast approaches. Now sit back and make sure you like, comment, subscribe and watch this whole entire video so that you don't miss nothing. In the bustling streets of Nassau, Bahamas, a legend was born. He went by the name of Kimbo Slice. But before he became the gritty, straight knock him out fighter, he was just Kevin Ferguson, a young boy with big dreams and an even bigger heart. Unfortunately, that heart would fail him later on in life, but we'll get into more of that later on in the story. Now, Kevin grew up in a tough neighborhood where life wasn't always easy and money was always tight. He worked hard to help his family make ends meet, taking on odd jobs like mowing lawns, washing cars, security jobs, and even being a chauffeur driving around drunk and scrippers. But deep down inside, he knew those gigs were not where he was meant to be spending his life. I want more. He felt empty and he never got too comfortable. He knew that he was destined for something greater. As Kevin grew older and more aware of himself, he found his brain to be drawn to the adventurous and adrenaline packed world of fighting. He had always been naturally strong, intimidating and fearless. And he knew he had just the right tools to make it into the ring. Coming from the streets of Miami, Dade County 305, you know what I'm saying? Which is like the number one high crime area, number two, you know what I'm saying, in the county, in the world, in the nation, you know what I'm saying, you gotta have mad props and respects, to, you know what I'm saying, to come through the street and throw hand and bang with guys who are strapped, you know what I'm saying, who's willing to pull out a pistol and bust at you, you know what I'm saying, on top of that, you know what I'm saying, you know, you fighting, I'm fighting for respect, and you know, I was fighting, you know what I'm saying, to make money. He gathered up his wits and decided he needed to make a power move. One that would start him on his journey. His real purpose and destiny in life. His calling was haymakers and knockouts. He heard the call and he answered. Kimbo began competing in backyard brawls where he quickly gained a reputation as a major force to be reckoned with. On his debut into the grassy arena of backyard banging, he rocked his opponent so bad that the man's eye wouldn't let him continue to fight. The man could no longer see out of his eye and the unbelievably hard punches caused him to throw the towel in. I mean, coming from the streets and all, I mean, we we, worked, we just started off just, you know, being a street fighter, you know, to, uh, it was a way to just make a couple extra dollars, you know, a few extra bucks. Um, never had a, a big agenda to, to, to go mainstream or anything like that. It was just a way to make, make some extra money, you know, and um, one thing led to another, you know, um, Mike, being the brains of it all, decided to bring a camera just, just to record this one particular fight so we could reflect back over it and just like I wanted to see, see how I moved, I just wanted to see the punches, I just wanted to see myself, you know, and, um, and the next, next, next thing you know, it, and, um, history was in the making from right there, um, you know, and we never thought that it was going to get the, uh, the recognition that it got, the attention that it got. You know, and, um, and, and it, it just blew up. He knew he was in the wrong sport after Kimbo dropped an eight piece with two large size and six biscuits on his ass. Now, since his hits were so vicious and often left opponents leaking, it was here that he would earn the nickname Kimbo Slice. He was slicing faces up and the competition. The streets were talking and the word of Kevin's talent spread far and wide beyond the city limits of Miami. It wasn't before long that he caught the attention of promoters who saw his potential and saw that he had a bit of commercial appeal. He just needed a bit of fine tuning. It was then that he was told that he could make more money in a professional setting than the back of trap houses in Dade County. He accepted the challenge and it was then 
that he transitioned from a backyard brawler to a professional fighter. Effortlessly taking on opponents in bare knuckle bouts and mixed martial art competitions. Rocking the competitors just like he knew he would as a child with those big dreams. Dude looked like shit, you know, but I don't know if that's how, this, how he really trains. I don't know that. I'm going to take this fight like I take every fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm the next man Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? If you coming in, if you coming in to fight me looking like that, dog, you gonna get your ass smashed. You know what I'm saying? Because this, this, you, you gotta put time in this, shit, man. This, this is not a game. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't, you don't get a fight by running your mouth. You get a fight from being, being good to, to be able to be a well-rounded fighter. But with success came challenges. Oftentimes, there is no escalator to success, and for some. You have to take the stairs. Kimbo faced setbacks and losses throughout his career, but he never let them break his spirit. He continued to train hard and push himself to be the best fighter he could be, always striving to improve and evolve. He knew he wasn't the most knowledgeable when it came to the technicalities, but he was a fast learner and was willing to do anything to not return to the hood from which he came. He vowed to change his family's life and wanted to set them up to be financially free. He was single-handedly breaking the generational curses that came before him. He was from the Bahamas and family is at the heart of society and parenting is deeply influenced by the concept of we're all in this together. Bahamian parents emphasize the importance of family togetherness and interconnectedness often involving extended family members and the child raising responsibilities. Children are raised with a strong sense of community and collective responsibility where everyone plays a role in their upbringing. Not like in America where parenting tends to emphasize individualism and independence. While family bonds are still valued, there's a greater emphasis on self-reliance and personal autonomy. American parents often prioritize fostering their child's individual interests and talents, encouraging them to pursue their own path and aspirations. But in Bahamian households, respect for authority and elders is of the utmost importance. Bahamian parents tend to be more authoritarian in their approach to discipline, placing a strong emphasis on obedience and adherence to the rules. Now, Kimbo knew it was him that had to bring his family up and out their rut. You know, the, the, the outcome was gonna be, you know, if I would have lost, it, it would have it would have been bad for us all, you know? <laughs> so we couldn't, I could that couldn't have happened. And, and then me, I'm, I'm a fighter, you know, I'm a fighter by nature, I'm a fighter by heart. You know, I, I love fighting, I love throwing hands, I love seeing hands coming at me, being able to make a guy miss and hit back, you know, um, and, and and that was just one of the one of the my my one of my good attributes that I had, that I was able to, to I can see the punch coming. It couldn't be no one else. In 2007, Kimbo made his professional MMA debut. Now Kimbo was nervous, but he was fully ready and excited. This was his big chance to show the world what he could do. He had trained hard, beat down on punching bags, did some running, and practiced his moves every day. Finally, the big day had arrived. Kimbo stepped into the arena surrounded by cheering fans. The fans knew that they were in for something special. Across from him stood his opponent, another strong fighter ready to take him on. The fight began and right away, Kimbo showed everyone why he was given the name Slice. He threw insanely powerful punches and kicks, moving with machine-like speed and agility. His opponent tried desperately to fight back, but his efforts were in vain. Kimbo was too strong and too fast. With each punch, the crowd warred with excitement and amazement. They could hardly believe what they were seeing. A backyard brawler turned professional fighter taking on the best of the best in the MMA world. Now, as the fight went on, Kimbo's opponent grew tired and worn out. But Kimbo kept pushing forward and punishing him. His determination shining through with every single move he made. And then, in a dramatic moment, they had everyone on the edge of their seats. Kimbo delivered the final blow, a powerful punch that sent his opponent crashing to the mat. The crowd erupted into cheers as a referee raised Kimbo's hand in victory. 
It was a moment Kimbo would never forget. The moment he proved to himself and the world that he was a true fighter capable of taking on any challenge that came his way. I can close that book with an ending, put that book on the shelf, and move on to the next. Is it the ending you expected? Yeah, yeah. Um, the fans was able to see, you know, kind of like what I was saying about me as a fighter and evolving. Um, always having heart, you know, dedicated to training and um, I was put in, you know, a pretty bad position, you know, and I was able to fight my way out of it and came out with the victory. I was in the ring too. Hit him, Kevin. Hit him, Kevin. I don't think nobody would want to go in the ring with him. I know I wouldn't. Now he competed in the organization Elite XE and Dana White would often go back and forth about Kimbo not being a real MMA fighter. That being said, he still might be Kimbo. <laughs> Kimbo sucks. Surprisingly, once his contract ended with the leak, guess who showed up quickly to try and recruit him? The big old hater himself, Dana motherfucking White. He got the offer to appear on the show, The Ultimate Fighter. The show was all about finding the best up and coming fighters and giving them a chance to compete in the UFC. Dana wanted to prove to himself and others what he thought about Kimbo. Was he a really real fighter or nah? Now at first, some of the other fighters didn't think that Kimbo belonged there. They thought he was just a street fighter and didn't possess what it took to make it in the UFC. But Kimbo didn't let their doubts get to him. He trained very hard every day, learning new skills and techniques from his coaches. As the competition went on, Kimbo proved himself to be a tough competitor. He won fight after fight, knocking out his opponents with his powerful punches and kicks. The other fighters soon began to respect him, realizing that he was more than just a backyard brawler. He was a true fighter with heart and determination. He now had earned a spot in the UFC and was soon to face off against some of the toughest opponents in the world, the best of the best. Now one of Kimbo's most memorable and resilience. It was a moment of triumph for Kimbo, a testament to his unwavering determination and relentless pursuit of greatness. But as the saying goes, with great power comes great responsibility. And Kimbo's fame brought with it his fair share of challenges. He faced criticism from some who doubted his abilities and questioned his true legitimacy as a fighter. But Kimbo never let the naysayers get to him. He remained focused on his goals determined to prove them wrong with every punch that he threw. After taking one too many defeats, he was dropped from his UFC contract. This don't go the way we hoped. After the fight, the most shocking news was handed off to the former backyard brawler. It was a message that no fighter with everything on the line would ever want to hear. The UFC told Kimbo that they wouldn't be giving him any more fights. They said they needed to make room for new, younger, more skilled and trainable fighters. And Kimbo's time with them, it was over. Okay, just a couple more things before we let you go here. You said Kimbo Slice is done, why? You know, the Kimbo Slice is no different than any of the other guys that, you know, don't make the cut, you know, and, and end up uh, getting cut from the UFC. I'm happy to have met Kimbo Slice. You know, he's not who I thought he was. Uh, he's a good guy. He came in. He worked hard. It was the equivalent of being dropped from the NFL or the NBA. Earth-shattering news that changes your whole entire world. Kimbo was heartbroken. Being dropped from the UFC was worse than any real punch to the gut he had ever received by man. But he didn't let it keep him down for long. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. 
but you gotta be willing to take the hits. He knew that every fighter faces setbacks and it's how you bounce back that counts. So Kimbo dusted himself off and kept fighting. He continued to train hard and compete to show the world that he was still a force to be reckoned with. In 2010, Kimbo made the transition from the MMA to professional boxing. He was eager to test his knockout skills in a new arena. He felt like in a way, he was back home, back to the grassroots. He faced off against opponents like James Way and Brian Green, but many fans felt like the opponents were nowhere near matched to take on Kimbo after a bunch of questionable fights. Then out of nowhere, tragedy struck. Kimbo's health took a deep dive and began to deteriorate. It appeared that the many years of fighting had taken their toll on his body. He also struggled with various health complications including heart problems and also kidney failure. He was awaiting a heart transplant at the time that he was going through such excruciating pain and also growing weaker by the day. As fearless as Kimbo Slice was to get in the ring with the most dangerous fighters, he had to admit to one of his friends that he feared he was going to die early. On Sunday, and it was the first time he ever said this to me, and I could hear it in his voice, he said, you know, Mike, he, he was, so, he, was, he was like, you know, I'm scared. And I never heard his voice say that. But even in the face of adversity, Kimbo refused to give up. His upbringing gave him that resilience to keep moving. He underwent surgery and treatment, determined to fight his way back to health. But tragically, on June 6, 2016, Kimbo Slice passed away at the age of 42. His death sent shockwaves through the fighting community and left his fans mourning the loss of a true legend. As the world mourned the passing of Kimbo Slice, they also celebrated his legacy, a legacy of strength, courage, and unwavering determination. Kimbo may have left this world too soon, but his spirit lives on in the hearts of all who were inspired by his incredible journey. And so, as the sun sets on the life of Kimbo Slice, we remember not only the fighter, but the man behind the legend. A man who dared to dream big and never back down from a challenge. And though he may be gone, his legacy will live on forever, inspiring future generations from ghettos all across the world to the suburbs, to the mansions, to chase their childhood dreams and never give up, no matter what obstacles they may face. This was the tragic story of Kimbo Slice. Now, if you thought this video was shocking, wait until you hear the story about Merlin Santana and how he was tricked off the street by a 15 year old girl. You don't want to miss this. Click on the link on the screen to watch it now.